many of our beliefs about how life works have died on the cross. We have been told, for example, that love always wins. But here we have Jesus who died without seeing love victorious. On the contrary, he was abandoned, betrayed, rejected. He died and love did not win. We have also been told, do good and you will be rewarded. But here we have Jesus, this lovely, beautiful, compassionate man, condemned to the most brutal punishment the Roman Empire could inflict. His good deeds were not rewarded. We have been told that justice and truth always triumph. But here we have Jesus, the innocent Lamb of God, treated like the worst of criminals. We have been told that God always answers our prayers and questions. And here we have Jesus who made just one question. God, God, why have you abandoned me? And he didn't get any answer. He died his question was not answered. My friends, the passion of Jesus undermines our consoling certainties about life. Life can be sometimes like an appalling nightmare. To the point that the Easter acclamation we have just sung, I would say beautifully sung, <laughs> says our birth would have been no gain have we not been redeemed. I repeat, my friends, we generally skip this line, but this line is very important. Our birth would have been no gain have we not been redeemed. That is to say, better to never have been born. You are listening to me tonight, but I am the one who ask you tonight, what should I say to people who have not fulfilled their dreams? What should I say to people who have been humiliated by life? What should I say tonight to the poor, the sick, the lonely, what should I say to the incurably unhappy? What should I say to the children who have lost their parents or to parents who have lost their children? What should I say tonight to the lover who has seen their partner breathe their last breath. I could tell them just the disappointment and despair is the only answer. Like he was 
for the woman at the empty tomb. Mary Magdalene says the gospel of John stood outside crying. They have taken my Lord away and I don't know where he is. So despair a disappointment like as one of the possible answers. But we can also choose hope. Hope that the reality is much bigger than this existence. Just as our mind's life is bigger than our skull. I want to share with you this personal experience. I'm reading at the moment a few books on the so-called near-death experience. The recount of those who claim to have seen something like heaven while they were almost dead. And I have intentionally chosen to read the writers who are totally skeptical about. So, 20% of people almost dead have had these experiences. Let me quote the experience of one of these people. I had the feeling of being drawn into a million or more lights. The most beautiful, brilliant, sparkling lights. Then I saw this large light like a spotlight with a being in it, as if this being was the light. My feelings in the presence of this being were joyful, comforting, peaceful, and lovely. It was as if I had arrived where I belonged, a feeling of a totalness and happiness that's indescribable. I am surprised that the common conclusion of these skeptical writers is that there is a mystery in life. Just like I said earlier, reality is bigger than what we experience day to day. Dear Baralas parishioners, I have been observing your faith for a while now. This is my fourth month in Baralas. And I am very much inspired by how your parents and your grandparents, most of them came from another country to Australia, how they beautiful, beautifully instilled Christianity in you. Now, it's your turn to be like this Paschal candle and keep the flame of hope alive. The hope that Christ is alive and that we are not alone. As a priest, I have always to face the same objection over and over again. And that is, there is too much suffering, too much 
unjust things in the world to believe in God. Yes, this is a good point. I cannot deny that is a good point. However, on the other hand, only if there is a God and the promise of a final triumph of a good, only in this case we can refrain from saying better to never ever been born. So, my beloved friends, today, despite everything, despite all the suffering, let's yell together the word of hope, the Easter word, Alleluia. Come on, together. Alleluia. Despite our sins and failures. Let's yell together, Alleluia! Despite our anger and anguish, let's yell together, Alleluia! Despite the weakness that surrounds us, let's yell together, Alleluia! Despite our fears, our doubts, let's yell together, Alleluia! Despite death in this holy night, let's yell together, Alleluia! Amen.